So graphs have really just entered into our modern lexicon, and it's something that you read about on the news, social graph, right? And this is a, the data structure that is probably one of the most powerful that you'll work with as a computer scientist, simply because it represents so much of the world around us, right? So social graphs, you know, this is a, a screenshot from a tool that allows you to sort of visualize your own private social graph. Um, I mean, the, the creation and maintenance and information that's embedded in that graph is on some level what makes Facebook so powerful, right? Is that they, better than anyone on earth, understand at least the expressed human relationships with people, at least what you told them, right? But a lot of us tell Facebook quite a bit, right? In terms of who our friends are and who our relatives are and who our spouses are and things like that. So, you know, the ability to construct this extremely accurate picture of the connections between people is super valuable, right? And obviously, you know, the connections between people, maybe not obviously, but the connections between people is one thing that you can model using a graph and in a variety of different ways. So this, this screenshot is sort of, you know, just a, uh, a fun screenshot, right? Like a fun image, but you know, that, that, that uh, lattice behind it is designed to express the fact that there are these connections between people. And if you understand the connections between people, you can see connections between groups and you can see things about people's sort of social uh, degree of uh, social connectedness and things like this. And, and there's potentially a large amount of information in those graphs that people are still learning about and still studying. Um, Graphs have, you know, uh, more prosaic purposes as well. So this is a website called Flight Connections that allows you to uh, visualize paths between different spots on the planet. And, you know, airlines spend a huge amount of time thinking about this, right? Because um, to them, this is all about kind of trying to maximize efficiency, right? Um, you know, should I offer a route between particular, two particular cities? Is there enough demand? Does that route, is that route efficient in terms of fuel? What's the airport like? So there's a lot of complexities that go into this, but on some level, you can represent this as a graph. Um, you know, the cities are the nodes on the graph and the edges are, um, you know, the, whether or not there is a way for a particular provider or a particular, using a particular type of transport to get from one city to another directly, right? Think about flight, this is flight connection. So is there a plane for a particular island that flies from point A to point B? Um, and this is probably a directed graph because there are cases where airlines fly one leg of a route, but they actually don't fly the other leg, right? It makes more sense to take people from point A to point B than it makes sense to get to take them from point B to point A. Now, you got to get a plane back to point A somehow, but sometimes you do that like by following a circle, right? Or by having the plane come in through another way. Um, so, you know, a directed graph and then probably also weighted because there's probably costs associated with this or some sort of value function that you want to think about as you decide whether or not to add a route or remove a route. Um, but probably the, the thing I nearest and dearest to my heart um, is this idea of visualizing the internet as a graph. And, and it is. So, you know, your ability to reach other machines, you know, your ability to watch this video, your ability to communicate with people all across the world is predicated on the maintenance of this really actually completely incredible piece of infrastructure that we call the internet that allows us to establish connections between different computers in different parts of the world. Um, and the ability to do this and how this is maintained and every, all the different um, entities that are involved. So this graph that's being shown here is, is sort of giving you a sense of like different relationships between different um, companies and other um, you know, organizations that maintain the internet and how they peer with each other and how data moves between various places and stuff like that. And it's also possible, as we know, to take a large chunk of the internet and almost silo it off, right? Find all the places where traffic moves in and out and do some sort of control at that point or some filtering or, or whatever. Um, and so you know, the, the properties of this graph have a great deal to do with not only how efficient the internet is and being able to move data from point A to point B, but also something about people's experience of the internet itself um, and what different you know, um, companies or countries or governments can do to reflect the free flow of information around the world. So graphs are everywhere, which is one of the reasons why I'm super excited we're talking about them uh, in, in the class because it is a data structure that even though we'll just do a small amount of work with, uh, sets the stage for much more exciting adventures uh, for you down the road.